Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Hannah, if you're new here. I don't have an intro for my videos anymore. I literally don't know how to start these. <laughs> anyway, today I really wanted to make a video uh, that's actually something I've been wanting to make for years now. I just never convinced myself that I was capable of doing it because I thought that I had to just stick to making content about books 100% of the time. And now that I am kind of leaning away from making just book content and all the content that I'm actually wanting to make has nothing to do with books for the most part, I feel like it's finally, or I'm finally ready to actually make video that's outside of the scope of what I have been doing for the past five years on YouTube. And all that to say that today I just wanted to make a video about my favorite TV shows. I watch a lot of TV. Um, I know it's very apparent that I read a lot of books and I have read a lot, but I also watch a lot of TV. I love stories. I love consuming stories in whatever form that might be. And especially lately, since I have been spending a lot more time indoors, I've been watching even more TV. Obviously a lot of people are staying indoors more frequently than they're used to, and I know people get really bored. So I thought that maybe sharing my list of all-time favorite TV shows would be nice so that maybe you can discover something new or maybe rewatch an old favorite or something like that because, I mean, that's like my favorite activity. I just rewatch my favorite shows over and over again. I rewatch things more than I watch new things because if I really like something, then I really, really like it and I'm willing to commit to watching it like five, six, seven, 10 times, <laughs> which is the case for some of these shows because that's truly just how much I like them. So I have a list of about 15 shows. It's a pretty good variety of things. I feel like my taste is kind of all over the place, yet still very specific. Without any further ado, let's just get into my list. So right off the bat, we just have to start off with um, my all-time favorite TV show. The majority of these are actually not ranked. I kind of grouped them together based on um, genre and category, essentially. But for the first one, this is my all-time favorite TV show. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably know what this is or if you've been following me online, but if you're new here then you might not know because I haven't talked about it recently, I don't think, but that is Avatar The Last Airbender. Avatar The Last Airbender is, in my very humble opinion, the greatest piece of media on earth. I don't think there is anything better. <laughs> I grew up watching this show when it first came out. I remember watching the series premiere as well as the series finale. That's how long I've been watching this and quite literally I have re-watched this show at least once every single year since it came out, like what, 10, 15 years ago? I don't remember how long it's been at this point, but a really long time ago. I love animated shows. I think animation is so misunderstood by so many people who just write it off as something that's just for kids. And while yes, Avatar was created for kids, it's not just a kids show. There's a reason why it has withstood the test of time, why I can watch it when I'm eight years old and feel something from it and then watch it again at 23 and still feel something different, that's because it's just exceptional. It's so well written, so well crafted, the story is unmatched, the characters are written to perfection, we have the greatest redemption arc of all time, we have some of the best written villains I've ever seen. It has such good messaging and morals in its story that are delivered in a very subtle yet upfront way, it truly just means everything to me. Like, I feel like Avatar shaped the person that I am today. I learned so many lessons from that show at such a young age, and to this day, every single time I rewatch it, I get something new out of it. And that's how you know something's exceptionally well written and something is extremely meaningful. Like, nothing compares to Avatar. Like, I've never read a book, I've never watched a movie, I've never seen anything anything else that has ever made me feel the way Avatar The Last Airbender makes me feel. I've never watched something as many times as I've watched Avatar. Avatar is just my whole life, my whole life. I have sold my soul to that show. So if you haven't watched Avatar, first of all, I'm sorry, but also I'm so excited for you because you have the opportunity to experience this exceptional piece of work for the first time, and that's just so exciting. So I highly recommend that you watch Avatar The Last Airbender. It is the greatest thing. You will not be disappointed. I don't think I've ever met a single person who didn't like this show, even if they watched it as an adult for the first time. That's how good it is. It's just the best. Nothing compares. I've yet to find anything that I've loved more than Avatar. So the first section of my list is actually all animated shows because, like I mentioned, I really love animated shows. I love anime and cartoons. I think it's one of the best mediums for storytelling. I think people write it off for no reason, like I said, because they just think it's for kids and it's really not just for kids. Like, there's so much storytelling that you can do in the form of animation. There's just so much potential there and so much great stuff that already exists that people are just, like, missing out on because they just think it's for children. 
and I'm so sorry to those people because you're missing out on some great stories. But anyway, the first few on my list, including Avatar, obviously, are all animated shows. And the next one on this list is actually an anime and my favorite anime, and that is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. This, I will say, is the only show I have ever watched, ever in my life, that has come close to Avatar The Last Airbender for me. It's like Avatar The Last Airbender is here, and then Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is here, and there's like nothing in between there, and then everything else is like below here. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is so close to perfection. That show is so close to perfection. <laughs> I've seen Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood seven times now? Seven or eight, I can't remember, but it's seven or eight, and I only watched it for the first time, I think, three years ago. Yeah, I've seen it a lot. <laughs> I just keep going back to this show because there is something about it. Even though I didn't watch it growing up, something about it makes me feel really nostalgic, and I think it's because thematically it is somewhat similar to Avatar The Last Airbender, in some ways at least, and I think that's why I just like get that kind of similar feeling from this show. So if you don't know about this show, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is actually the second adaptation of the um, manga Full Metal Alchemist, and there is an original adaptation, I think that came out in 2003, which is just called Full Metal Alchemist, which is the original TV show, and then there is Brotherhood, which is the second one. So it gets kind of confusing if you don't know too much about it, because I didn't know which one to start with when I started watching this. The original series from 2003 started as an adaptation before the manga series had concluded, so before that was finished, kind of like Game of Thrones. So like about halfway through that show, the show derives from the manga itself, so it changes a lot of the plot and the characters are different and they play different roles versus the Brotherhood version, which is the one that is my favorite, is the adaptation that came out after the manga series had concluded. And it is what is considered the like true adaptation of the show. Like it's the one that's the most accurate to the manga. Um, and it's by far the one that I recommend. I know people like argue to death over this, um, but I don't like the 2003 version personally. And I like Brotherhood so much more, like infinitely more. It's about these two brothers who are alchemists and they, lost their mother and then committed the one taboo of alchemy, which was human transmutation, essentially trying to bring someone back to life. They tried to bring their mother back to life after she died, and then they lost um, parts of their bodies. Now they're trying to get their bodies back, and that's the very loose, loose plot of the show, the kind of like driving um, storyline of the show, but there's so much more to it than that. So many characters. It's a huge cast of characters, which is one of my favorite things, and I feel like a trend you'll notice throughout this list. I really like big casts of characters. And yeah, it's just, it's so wonderful. It's really sad, but it's also really funny. And it's the show that got me into anime, like I mentioned, but I've never seen another anime that's even come close to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood for me. I love this show with my whole heart. I've literally seen it so many times and I know I'm gonna watch it so many more times too because that's how much I enjoy it. So if you're thinking about getting into anime, I highly recommend trying this show. I know it's considered one of the best anime of all time and I fully agree with that. <laughs> It is, in my opinion, of everything that I've seen. So yeah, I highly, highly recommend this show. It's fantastic. Okay, next up we have another animated show, and this is one that I recently finished watching because the last season recently came out, and that is Shira. Here's the thing with Shira. When I first started watching it, I didn't think I would like it. I actually didn't watch it for several years because I didn't think I was gonna like it. I was in this phase where I was like, I don't like anime, I don't like cartoons, I'm not really a huge fan of comedic things, I'm not gonna watch it. And then a few of my friends had watched it, and they recommended it to me, and they were like, no, I promise you'll like actually like it. So I started watching it, and I fell in love with this show. I've since seen it, I think, three or four times all the way through, and the last season just, like, sealed it for me as one of my favorite shows ever. It's similar to Avatar thematically, again. You can clearly see, based on the shows that I like, what kind of themes I like in my shows, and Shira's no exception to that. Like, thematically, it's very similar to those other shows, but it's also very much its own thing. It's a lot cheesier, I think, than Avatar and Full Metal Alchemist at times. Um, the humor is different, and the humor is a bit younger, in my opinion, especially than Full Metal Alchemist. That one's not really, like, a kid's kid's show. It's, like, TV 14-ish. There's a lot more blood and gore in that. But with Shira, it's definitely made for a younger audience, and you can clearly tell that, but it's still, like, has made me cry multiple times, and it's made me super emotional, very attached to a lot of the characters in a way that I did not expect to be attached to them. Like, for those who've seen it, Katra is a character that I love almost as much as I love Zuko, which like is really, really, really hard to do because I don't love any character the way that I love Zuko and a lot of the characters from Avatar, but 
I love Catra so much. Her story arc is one of my favorite things that I've seen recently in like any media, in any storytelling. It's one of the best things I've seen and I just like can't get over how good it is. There's so much good representation in this show of sexuality and gender and race and it just covers a lot of important things while also still remaining lighthearted and fun but still being deep, meaningful, and honest. And it just makes me really happy knowing that there's a show like this that exists for kids growing up right now, getting to watch Shira because it reminds me of like Avatar for me personally was a show that like shaped who I was as a kid growing up and I feel like Shira is definitely that type of show but again also something that you can watch when you're an adult and it still has impact which is my favorite type of show clearly. I highly recommend Shira it's just it's one of my faves it's really one of my faves and it took me completely by surprise. <laughs> All right next up I feel like some of you are probably waiting for me to mention this show um, but that is of course none other than Legend of Korra the sequel to Avatar The Last Airbender. This is another one of obviously my favorite shows of all time. This is the last animated show I have on this list, but uh, Legend of Korra, I feel like there's so much discourse right now about Avatar and Legend of Korra, but people are constantly comparing it to Avatar, which makes sense. Obviously it is the sequel to the show, but it's very different in my opinion. And I feel like I hold Korra to a completely different standard than I hold Avatar to. But as far as a sequel to what is the greatest show of all time, in my opinion, Korra is about as good as you can get. The thing with Legend of Korra is that it has its problems for sure and as a whole I don't love it nearly as much as I love Avatar but book three of that show is so good. <laughs> it's so good. That season feels the most similar to Avatar out of all of them thematically. The direction in which the characters all go, the arc of the entire season, and the arc of the characters individually in that season as well is by far the best and most well-developed. And that season alone I feel like saves Legend of Korra for me in a lot of ways. That's not to say that I don't like it, obviously. It's on my list of favorite shows of all time because I do really really love it and I do really like the characters. Characters. But at the same time, while I do have some issues with it, I feel like people are like overly harsh when it comes to certain aspects of Korra, specifically when it comes to Korra as a character. People are really critical of her and I mean I disagree with the majority of people's opinions on Korra, the people who don't like her, because I love Korra. I think she's a really well-written character and in my opinion Korra as a character is one of the best parts of Legend of Korra as a whole and Zaheer because book three is perfection. I love Legend of Korra. I do highly recommend it if you've watched Avatar. Uh, you should definitely watch Legend of Korra afterwards. I think it's totally worth watching. And again, like I said, it's still one of my favorite shows. All right, so the next section is kind of like my sci-fi fantasy favorite shows. Fantasy is like my favorite genre. I love fantasy, uh, clearly, as you can tell from all of those animated shows as well. But sci-fi, I'm not actually a huge fan of sci-fi. However, there is one sci-fi show, truly, I think it's one of the best shows I've ever seen and just like deeply, deeply underrated. And that is Sense8. Sense8 is a Netflix original original show that came out several years ago at this point and it only got two seasons which in my opinion is criminal because this show deserved its full run and you can tell they still had more story in them. I'm actually not one to push for like a show being super super long. I think anything more than five seasons is way too much. Five seasons can even be way too much but usually if they try and push past five seasons it just starts to get bad from there. But I feel like Sense8 deserved like a solid three seasons or something. The second season ended up just ending with like some long movie that they released instead or like an extended episode something like that because you could tell they had like another season in them but it was canceled tragically. It's about these eight people from all over the globe who are psychically connected to one another and I don't really want to say anything else because if you want to watch it then like I don't want to spoil anything because part of the fun of that show is not knowing anything and being so confused for a long time but then you finally understand and I really really think you should just watch it to experience it because it's so good but a lot of the show has to do with in my opinion like one of the main themes of this show has a lot to do with empathy because it's about these eight people who are psychically connected to each other and they live in different parts of the globe but they can feel each other's emotions a lot of of the time. So in a lot of ways it has a lot to do with empathy and I've never seen a show tackle that in the way that Sense8 does and I just think it's so well done. Apart from that it's also visually just really beautiful. All the characters like speak different languages and you get to hear that in the show as well because all of the actors are from those different countries and it's just so just genuinely diverse in a way that I don't think I've ever seen in a show and it's just so naturally ingrained into the show obviously and just oh it's just so good and talking about this is just making me 
want to rewatch Sense8, which I've seen multiple times as well, but it's been a few years actually. I deeply, deeply love Sense8. I highly, highly recommend it. I don't think that it got the love and appreciation that it deserves because it's one of the best things I've ever seen. And there's definitely a good fan base for it, but like more people need to watch Sense8. Sense8 deserves so much better than it got. <laughs> and then next on my list is The Magicians. The Magicians is one of my favorites because it knows exactly what it is. This show is super campy and satirical. It just kind of takes all these tropes of fantasy and then turns them on their head. Like it's just so well done. It's so funny. It's so deeply emotional. And I never thought that I would like this show as much as I actually do. I love all of the characters. They're all kind of a mess, but that makes it way more fun. Like I said, it's very campy, but it understands what it is. So it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it also doesn't downplay its emotional moments. So I just think it's a lot of fun. I highly, highly recommend this show if you want something that's kind of dark, a little bit edgy, but also on the funny, lighter side at times. And it's another show that just like took me completely by surprise. But again, it's a show that I've watched multiple times over again because that's how much I've enjoyed watching it. All right, the next section that I have is what I kind of like to call TV shows targeted at white men. <laughs> Basically, these are shows like, think like Breaking Bad, which is actually not on this list because I've never seen Breaking Bad. <laughs> shows like that, like where that's their target audience, like the target audience of Breaking Bad, I feel like is the target audience of the majority of these shows. These shows are kind of just shows that center around white men that were kind of made for white men, but there's just still something about them that's really good. And the first one on that list for me is Mad Men. I will preface this by saying, barring the last like two seasons of this show, because this show falls victim to the syndrome of having more than five seasons and then just not knowing what to do with its characters, barring like the last two seasons, especially the last season, this show is phenomenal. Mad Men is actually a show that I've studied in class before, which makes it more fun for me too, because I got to have like discussions about it. But I love this show. I have seen it like four times, not all the way through, mostly just like the first three seasons. Cause like I said, it starts to go downhill pretty quickly. But if we exclude the latter parts of the show, which I'm not too big of a fan of, the early seasons of this show are impeccable. It's analytical. It understands what it is. It appropriately makes a commentary on what it's trying to make a commentary on on and it does so well. It's dramatic, intense, suspenseful. It keeps me invested. Despite the fact that you would feel like Mad Men could get boring because it's literally just these dudes in an office talking about their bro -y lives as they're making advertisements and smoking cigarettes and drinking way too much, something about it is still so appealing because it's so well written and really well directed. It's one of those shows that I like to watch because I think it's just so visually well done as well. There's so much to analyze there. Mad Men kind of makes me feel like I'm in a discussion section and we're sitting there picking apart like doing some sort of literary analysis because that's how much you can go in depth with this show. You can actually do that with the majority of the shows on my list because that's the type of TV that I like but Mad Men is definitely one of those shows. Don Draper is just like a fascinating character like to this day even though it's been years since I've rewatched Mad Men I think about Don Draper regularly and I just think it's really really well done like I don't know what else there is to say. Mad Men is just a good show. Then the next show on my list is Peaky Blinders which is another show I've seen multiple times. I don't even need to say that. I've seen every show on this list at least twice. But Peaky Blinders is another one of my favorites, especially because of the visual experience you have while watching this show. Peaky Blinders really reminds me of Six of Crows, the book series, because of the vibe you just get from it, because it's kind of centered around these criminals, like this gang who are like the main characters. And they're not good people, but you're still rooting for them because you want them to beat out the other bad people because <laughs> they're not as bad as those people. And there's still something about them that's like I really like shows that have questionable characters when the main characters are morally gray. That's like my favorite thing ever because I may not like them as people, but I still like them as a character. I love the aesthetic of this show. It's just such a good vibe. Their costumes are great. It's super dark, really messed up at times and very graphic at other times, but definitely worth your time if that's something that you're into. If you like darker shows like that, then I would definitely recommend checking this one out because I think it's well worth it. And then the next show I have on my list is actually Broadchurch, which again is another visually 
very beautiful show. It's basically a murder mystery series that's about this young boy named Danny who ends up dying and they find his body. And it's about these two detectives who are trying to solve the case of his murder. And I don't know how to describe Broadchurch other than it's like very deeply emotional because you get invested in the lives of all the people in this very small town where this murder takes place. And you find out so much about each of these people. And then you're trying to figure out who committed the murder along with the characters who are trying to figure out who committed the murder. So it feels like a very immersive experience when you're watching this show and that's one thing I really love about Broadchurch. I also really like the small town setting because I am from a small town so anytime there's a TV show that has like a small town setting I um, tend to gravitate towards it or I want to watch it just because I find it relatable. But one of the best things about this show for me is David Tennant. I love David Tennant. I was a huge Doctor Who fan when I was younger and David Tennant was by far my favorite doctor. I've seen so many things with David Tennant in them. If he's in it, I will watch it because I love him. <laughs> All of the actors are great. The story is so well done. I found it really suspenseful and I didn't find it predictable either because I usually have this problem where I, anytime I watch anything that's like a murder mystery or thriller or something like that, I can usually predict whoever the killer or whatever, the criminal. I can always figure out who they are pretty early on. But with this one, I did figure it out before the end but I was still shocked because I didn't think they were gonna do it, but they did end up doing it. And it was so good, it was so good. And I've seen all of the seasons of this show, but personally my favorite season by far is season one. I didn't think the show really had to go on much longer, but the other seasons are still good as well. But season one is just, great. It's so good. It's exceptional and I highly, highly recommend checking it out. If for nothing else than just David Tennant, because David Tennant's the best. <laughs> the next show on my list is How to Get Away with Murder, which is a show that I've been watching for so many years. I think I watched the season premiere of this show when it first came out because I was so intrigued by the concept and I've been keeping up with this show basically ever since it first came out. Viola Davis is just perfect as Annalise Keating. And Annalise Keating is, I think, one of the most iconic television characters that we've ever gotten. And I'm just so grateful for her existence. This show is another perfect example of exactly what I like in TV, a full cast of characters who are all kind of morally gray and questionable, and you don't really know if you should be rooting for them, but you still are rooting for them, even though they're committing crimes. Because they're still all kind of good people at heart, so you still want the best for them. I used to be super into criminal law, and I was a huge fan of like shows like Criminal Minds and stuff for a really long time, but How to Get Away with Murder is the only show that I was watching like during that time that has withstood the test of time for me because that show is still so good, especially season one. Season one is phenomenal television. It's just perfect. There's so many iconic scenes from that show that I think about like on a regular basis. It's definitely another show I feel like you could analyze in a classroom. Like it's just so good. And if you haven't watched How to Get Away with Murder, I highly, highly recommend that you do. It's so worth your time. But yeah, I feel like I have noticed that it started to go downhill a little bit, especially like after after season three, it was like not my fave anymore. But the first two seasons especially are just great. They're so, so, so good. So yeah, would highly, highly recommend this show if you haven't checked it out. I also forgot to mention that How to Get Away with Murder and Broadchurch were in my kind of like crime category. That was that next section. But following the crime section, the next section that we have is K-dramas because recently I have gotten super, super into K-dramas. I have watched so many K-dramas. It's honestly embarrassing at this point. And it was actually the K-dramas that I'd watched recently that kind of gave me the motivation to actually make this video because I was thinking of making an entire video just recommending K-dramas, but I was like, no, you're not gonna do that. You haven't even talked about all of your other favorite TV shows yet. So let's talk about those and also recommend some of your favorite K-dramas because these are truly just like some of my favorite shows of all time now. I wouldn't put them on some separate list. Like they belong on this list. They're part of my favorite shows. And the first one on that list is hands down my all-time favorite K-drama and that is Hotel Del Luna. Hotel Del Luna is a perfect show. I know I've said this about a lot of shows, but it is truly like a perfect show. It's probably in my like top five favorite shows. I don't know if I can say that for sure, but like it's at least in the top 10. This is like a list of 15, so it's at least in the top 10. <laughs> it's basically about this hotel, clearly, that is a hotel that ghosts go to before they pass over to the next life. So when someone dies, their ghost will go to this hotel and then they will pass over to the next life, into the afterlife. And it's about the owner of this hotel slash the person who helps people like cross over to the afterlife. And she's played by IU, who is a Korean idol, and she's phenomenal in this show. She's so good. And the story is obviously about this hotel and the people passing over, but it's about her life and what happened to her and why she became the owner. As 
as well as a bit of a romance. And it's just so good. When I first watched that show, I was just like amazed because I hadn't watched something that had gotten me that invested in such a long time. And it felt so good to like care about the romance in a show for the first time in a really long time. Because I love romance in stories, but I'm very, very picky with the ones that like I actually like. And I love the romance in this story. I love everything about this story. The thing that's so great about it is that it's not just like a romance. The fantasy aspect of it is actually my favorite part of the whole show. It's super funny and it's also really deep and really emotional. It'll definitely make you cry. It'll make your heart wrench and your heart flutter. Like it's just such a perfect show. I have not watched a K-drama that I like better. There's some that are on this list as well that come very close, but nothing unfortunately has been Hotel Del Luna. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So please, if you want to get into K-dramas, watch Hotel Del Luna. It's so good. It is so good. <laughs> the second K-drama that I have to recommend is one that's actually not finished yet. The last two episodes of this show are actually coming out this weekend. So when I'm making this video, I still haven't finished the show. But by the time this video goes up, the last two episodes will be out. So it will be finished and I will probably be sobbing my eyes out. And depending on how this ends, I might like this as much as Hotel Del Luna, but right now it's like Hotel Del Luna and then this show. It's like very close. It's really, really good, but it still hasn't topped it for me. But that show is It's Okay to Not Be Okay. I love this show. I love it so much. And I did not think I would like it as much as I do, but it's so good. I watch it every single weekend with my mom and my sister. They are both equally as invested as I am. My mom does not even like TV. Like she barely likes any shows. There are very, very few shows she's ever enjoyed and she loves this show. I can't recommend it enough. It is so good. It's essentially about these two brothers, um, the younger brother who is a caregiver and he takes care of his older brother a lot who has autism. And our other main character is this author and she's the author of these children's books. And I don't really wanna say too much more, but it takes place the majority of it takes place in this psychiatric hospital. I've never seen a show talk about mental illness in this way and it's just so heart-wrenching. Like I've cried countless times. It's beautiful. It's like just really unlike anything I've ever seen before and I highly highly recommend it. It's definitely very dark at times and there's a lot that's like difficult emotionally to deal with when you're watching this show but that's the thing that I really enjoy about it. Like I feel so emotionally invested in these characters and in the plot too. I highly recommend both Hotel Da Luna and It's Okay to Not Be Okay. There are definitely more K-dramas I would recommend. Like two more that I will just name off the top of my head are Isawan Class and um, While You Were Sleeping. Those are two of my my other favorites for sure. I really like those, but I definitely think you should watch It's Okay to Not Be Okay. That show is so good. It's so, so good. That and Hotel Da Luna, they're just the best, just the best. <laughs> All right, and so lastly on my list, we have moved on to my comedy section. <laughs> I'm actually not a huge fan of comedic shows. I don't really watch that much comedy, but these are the ones that have just stuck with me that I really deeply love. First one on that list is none other than The Good Place. The Good Place is again another show I didn't think I would like because I didn't like comedy because for years I refused to let myself feel joy. <laughs> but once I finally started letting myself enjoy comedies, I discovered The Good Place and realized how much I love The Good Place and I've since just fallen in love with that show. It's so funny. It's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen, but it also makes me super, super emotional, which as we all know, is something I deeply appreciate. I love all of the characters. I feel cheaty on such like a molecular level sometimes. <laughs> Every time I see Good Place memes, I always laugh because it's just so good. It's really so good. It's such a happy show, but so weirdly dark in some ways, but very lighthearted at the same time. It's just the best. <laughs> and then finally, the last show on my list is actually um, kind of more of like a drama comedy, but I would still consider it kind of a comedy. Very different type of comedy than The Good Place, but still somewhat of a comedy. And that is The Marvelous Miss Maisel. The Marvelous Miss Maisel is one of my favorite current shows right now. It is so entertaining. It's hilarious. I was a really big fan of Gilmore Girls years ago, but it's not one of my favorite shows. It's not something I go back and rewatch on a regular basis. It hasn't stuck with me in that same way because I didn't watch it when I was like a kid growing up. I watched it when I was a bit older. So when I heard that she, that Amy Sherman Palandino was coming out with a different show, a new show, I was excited to check it out because I did like Gilmore Girls. And when I watched The Marvelous Miss Maisel, I was like so taken aback because I did not expect to like it as much as I did and now I'm just in love with that show. The costumes are perfect. The aesthetic is 
beautiful. I love the way that it's filmed. It has the same pacing as Gilmore Girls and every Amy Sherman Palladino show that like you just know she made this show. Like you can feel it. But I think it's by far her best work. I love the characters. I love that so many of them make such questionable decisions because you're just sitting there screaming at them and they infuriate you but they're still super lovable. And I'm always smiling whenever I watch this show, which is obviously a very good sign of a show. If it can make me that happy then I know I'm enjoying it. I actually wasn't the biggest fan of the most recent season. I prefer the first two seasons much more, but I'm curious to know where the show is going to go from here. But I highly, highly recommend this one as well if it's something that you think you'd be interested in. But that is it for my list of my favorite TV shows. A list of TV shows for you to watch if you are bored to get you through quarantine, to get you through the long night. <laughs> I feel like I am missing something and there's definitely something I'm missing. There are definitely way more shows that I love that I didn't include on this list that I would probably consider favorites at one point or another. Kind of just depends on like what I'm watching at the moment, but I feel like comprehensively this is pretty much my list of absolute favorites. But if there are any shows that are on your list of all-time favorites, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I'm always looking for something new to watch. I have watched so many TV shows. I'm out of things to watch at this point, so I definitely want to try and discover something new. So if you have any recommendations, please do let me know. But I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!